Why buy your next vehicle from Community Motors of Mason City? Great service from three locations. Community and Monroe, Community Motors Westside, and Mason City Ford. Ten new franchises and hundreds of vehicles to give you more choices. Plus, Community offers an exclusive 3-3 warranty on pre-owned vehicles and 10-year, 250,000-mile warranty on new. Need more reasons why? Stop or visit communityautogroup.com. Because nobody beats a community deal. Nobody. Good evening, everyone, uh, council members and citizens. Happy New Year. It's an honor to be here tonight as your mayor to report to you that the state of your city is strong and brimming with opportunities. The last few years have been dedicated to establishing a much needed foundation for this government and this city to build on. First, I want our citizens to know what an honor it is to serve with this council. Our members are truly disciplined diligent and visionary. They work through policy and issues respectfully and with integrity. Primarily, they are solution oriented and their only agenda is the strength of Mason City. This group of men and women is not interested in popularity for the sake of popularity. They're interested in getting it right and getting it done. They're unique in the city's recent history and don't agree on everything, but they do their job with civility. They understand the prospective partners are watching closely. Our citizens are to be congratulated for assembling such a fine council. I hope you salute them. They've earned it. But council can't do it alone. This year marked Mr. Trout's fifth year as your city administrator. He is now the longest serving city administrator in Mason City history. As I reflect back on this year and then the last three, Mason City should feel very fortunate they were able to acquire the services of a man of his quality, especially given, the, given Mason City's position when he was hired. First, he's a man of integrity, but he's shown he can deal with some, shall we say, unique personalities. But when given the opportunity to succeed, especially in the last year, he has executed to reach the final goals. Of course, it comes with some bumps and bruises, but this man perseveres. Mr. Trout has assembled a solid leadership team that is really starting to hit their stride, and with the help of some great employees. They're responding to the challenge to confront us, refining the way they have done business, and, and uh, are taking the city to the next level. There is still a long path ahead, but I'm confident our staff will be a key component of us becoming a more attractive, efficient, and effective government as we move into the future. Citizens in the last year, council and our fine city staff have laid block by block a solid foundation for the future. It is a sustainable future built around a commitment to transparency, excellence in government services, job retention, and creation, and sound fiscal policy. We had a pretty good year in 2012. Unemployment in Mason City, estimated a little over 5%, is very low when you compare it to the 7.8% national rate. Number of days on the market for homes declining, Commercial building permits are at their highest level in five years, and industrial permits for the second year in a row are at their highest level in a decade. Rest assured, Mesa City is climbing out of this long national recession and has a healthy upward trajectory. Staff finished up and council passed a number of code upgrades, hired a full-time human resource manager and a new director of growth development planning, reorganized and streamlined all the third floor departments came to an agreement with the Iowa Department of Transportation on Highway 122 and completed over $5 million in needed infrastructure projects, all while leveraging $1.7 million in state and federal money. Examples include East State Street, the emergency vehicle preemption system, and sodium hypochlorite generator that allows us to generate our own chlorine. We also improved nuisance abatement and beautification efforts and continue to grow our residential tax rebate program. Hired a new city assessor, negotiated and agreed on, a three, on three new collective bargaining agreements, and purchased a new ladder truck for the fire department to maintain our ISO ratings. This helps us preserve our insurance rates. One of the mo most typical city concerns, the perception of crime, reared its head this year focused around a local establishment. After being advised that this establishment had a recent history of increased criminal activity surrounding it, your council took swift action sent a firm message that Mason City will not tolerate the safety of its citizens to be compromised by a business 
businesses that attract illicit activity. I'm optimistic that our exceptional police force in partnership with the Sheriff's Office, State Patrol, will continue to make progress in this area. Council has made addressing crime a priority and will continue to fully support the department. The flood aftermath is finally coming to a close and has reached one of its final milestones. Our last, last offer has been made and staff is working to get the final homes down. It has been a long process, but that's your federal government at work, folks. City staff has done an admirable job of navigating those more complex waters. Mr. Trout made significant progress on our lean initiative this year. Six employees were trained to conduct rapid process improvement events, and three completed Mercy's Lean 101 training. Rapid process improvement is designed to be completed in a few days. With a full immersion exercise, employees typically find it very fulfilling. The results are usually powerful enough that implementation can begin at the end of the event. And with front-end buy-in from our employees established due to their contribution and approval by senior staff almost guaranteed. This is a crucial program to move our city toward understanding our existing workflows and identifying improvements that are needed. Mr. Travis recently completed their first event and currently has uh, rapid process improvements have been scheduled monthly through the year. I'm hopeful that we will be able to share some of these experiences with you as we move forward this year. No question, this will benefit our customers, our taxpayers. And you, our citizens, finished up the year by overwhelmingly passing our local option sales and service tax question that was up for election. This was a big one for us. We're a town of 28,000, but as, as our corridors, Sarah's study points out 52% of the people working here come from outside the city. That is an enormous honor and responsibility that Mason City is charged with. Our economy is dependent on North Island's working here, and North Island's families depend on us to supply and maintain the disproportionate infrastructure required to make this economy and quality of life possible. That is why a measure that allows us to all share the burden was so important to all of us, in town and in North Island. And then there are the awards. This public was recognized with this year for the landmark Vision Iowa project, your River City Renaissance. It started when an internationally read Con Nast Traveler named Mason City, one of the best cities for architecture in the world. Long signed cities known for centuries for superb architecture, such as Barcelona, Tel Aviv, Florence, Istanbul, Dubai, and Oxford. But it continued when the city was honored with the Iowa Chapter of American Planning Association's Best Urban Design for the Federal Avenue Streetscape and Utility Improvement Project. Main Street, Iowa, and Governor Branstad awarded Mason City and our partners with the best public improvement of the Mason City Streetscape. And then went a step further and gave us the best signature project of the year for the historic park inn. And finally, the National Trust for Historic Preservation presented Mason City and our partners with the National Preservation Award. Hats off to all of our citizens and volunteers for contributing to such a culturally significant project that has received state, national, and international accolades. Now one of our primary commitments to our citizen is openness to, to our government, transparency and service to you, the citizen. Your council over the last year has conducted 24 listing posts for the second year in a row the most of any previous councils. Council also recognized that 50% of our citizens could not view their council at, at home, so they remedied, remedied it with an online viewing and archiving platform called Granicus. Now our citizens have instant access to council meetings on the web anytime they want. Folks, you have one of the most accessible, council, accessible councils in the state of Iowa, and we live in a state known for open government. In addition, your council and staff have established more online resources. Council recently passed an ordinance mandating all of our boards and commissions, agendas, packets, and minutes will be online in one central clearinghouse, allowing our citizens to obtain up-to-date information. They also fill the void in our citizens' ability to report problems and communicate with staff with C-Click Fix. C-Click Fix is an online application which works with one smartphone to allow our citizens to report issues and have them acknowledged and solved in real time. It's been a wonderful communication, accountability tool, it's likely going to be expanded 
and to other departments. This is just this year. In addition, our staff has also done a tremendous job continuously updating MasonCity.net to allow online utility payments, code red, document central, e-notifications, and of course, you can like us on Facebook at City of Mason City, where you can find a lot of announcements as they happen. Now, our long-term sustainability project continues to move forward. The Environmental Steward Stewardship Advisory Committee has been retooled as the Envir Environmental Sustainability Advisory Committee and has some real, real expertise in place to develop and refine our course within the comprehensive plan. However, as we move forward, we keep in the front of our mind the key components of cultural vibrancy, environmental integrity, and economic prosperity with all of our actions. No question there is cultural vibrancy. That is part of the fabric of Mason City. We have a rich tradition of excellence in the arts and music. We have and support multiple museums, a stunning library, and multiple theaters. This year, Council also seeded a self-sustaining uh, venture, the River City Sculptures on Parade, which has received very positive feedback from our citizens. We've established a floodplain property for our first dog park, and are moving forward on a master trail and sidewalk program that will connect our vast number of parks. But I believe one of our most exciting components is that our citizens and businesses competed statewide and were rewarded as a Blue Zones demonstration site. This is such an exciting community wellness program and is demonstrated by over 150 person leadership team and committee members that have been assembled. We also have our top 20 employers and 45 total businesses partnered, involved, and growing. We have excited, exciting, and innovative people coming to town like Dan Buter, Dan Burden, to help us reform components of our community to promote healthier activities. We also remain focused on our environmental integrity by striving to attract sustainable businesses that use renewable resources to produce saleable commodities. Agribusiness such as Golden Grain, AGP, and Bicor. We also incorporating more environmentally friendly components such as perme permeable pavement and floodplain concerns into our development. We can also do our best to modify building standards to allow existing stock to remain viable, therefore, in our economy and on our landfill. Now this council continues to focus vigorously on economic viability, job retention, and setting the table for expansion. There are key, five key accomplishments in this area. One of the most significant is the reconciliation of the Mason City EDC and the North Iowa Corridor EDC. With our wonderful partner, Saratoga County and Clear Lake. We are now one with one goal, growth. Second, we continue our accelerated rate of approved development agreements with our partners and completed five significant agreements this year with Cargill, with Davidson, us Oboy, and Mercy Medical Center. Every one of these expansions secures these job creators in North Iowa and enables them to grow. We continue to foster a culture of entrepreneurship here in May City with our microenterprise program, a partnership with NIAC's Papa John Entrepreneurial Center. It's been up and running for just a few months and already has four companies enrolled and more prospects coming in. Our goal is to enable and provide the tools to young companies who will grow into hometown global companies of the future, like the metal crafts or the curries of the world. We also just completed unify, unifying our five existing urban renewal districts into one district this past year. This strategic unification creates one large district that covers almost all commercial or industrial zone properties within our city. And the unification also adds new areas to the district, like our gateways, in order to include more commercial zone property. The change allows greater flexibility to offer incentives to industry or business that are considering moving to our city, no matter what area of town they would like to, to locate in. It also provides a resource to do infrastructure projects that are needed to encourage growth in the areas covered by the district boundaries. The flexibility in this change will be very useful over the remaining nine years of the district's life. The district will expire in 2021, and the incremental value will be added to the base taxable value of the community at that time. Lastly, after about a decade since the HNTV study, an agreement of understanding on Common Ground will be coming forward soon. Common Ground identifies how we should annex, provide infrastructure, and develop land in a cohesive manner on the west side of town. This past year, we had productive discussions with Clear Lake County, and our staff all worked together as been able to develop a plan as to how Mesa City will grow into the future. But fiscally, 
This was a landmark year. Your council and staff were able to lower the levy for the first time in a decade. In addition, they were able to reduce capital spending, $7.5 million, the lowest debt for capital improvements since 2003, when the capital improvement process was developed. My expect expectation is that we'll be able to maintain the current levy this year and hold utility rates constant. But I challenge our staff and council, be creative, innovative, make strategic choices through this budget process. I want to sign a budget that lowers the levy for a second straight year. With that goal in mind, let me talk about two other exercises that we are planning for the budget process and future planning. First, the city was faced with a very real reality last year. With the switch of one vote in the state legislature, there would have been a needed commercial property tax reform bill passed. However, the way that bill was structured, it would have decreased revenue from our city, 200,000 per year for six years, translating into 1.2 million reduction. The challenge is twofold. First, we need to be able to clearly communicate to our legislators not just what the impact, that the impact would be substantial, but what it would be. Second, we want to be able to plan with our community so we can engage in responsible community dialogue about how we would prioritize those reductions if they came to pass. Now this year, our council will conduct an exercise to simulate those reductions as if they, they as, as if they would have to plan for three of the six years, a parallel budget, if you will. They're going to identify and prioritize $600,000 in potential reductions so our legislators in our community clearly understand the impact of reduced revenue within Mason City and can talk about it, talk through it. Lastly, Mr. Trout is also going to work with his staff to develop a five-year operations budget so we can better plan for future challenges and opportunities. Now, I do want to take a moment before I close to address a challenge that I have talked about for some time that is presenting a unique opportunity for our next generation. We have often identified the challenge of retaining our next homegrown generation who grew up here in our fine Mason City private and public schools and then received their college degree but went on to start their careers elsewhere, away from their families. It's been challenging to recruit talent who want to move to Mason City with their capital and build their families. However, we have an enormous opportunity in front of us. The recent Iowa State study of the Cerro Gordo County economy that benchmarked us against more than 30 peer communities found that we contain the highest growth potential for high technology jobs among those peers. That means that our high tech companies in the region can't hire fast enough, and we're hearing that. It means individuals with high tech skills can find tremendous opportunity right here at home. The challenge is attracting those people to those careers. But the message is that it is a myth to suggest that if you wish to engage in a high technology field, once out of high school or college, and earn a living wage, that you have to move away. Quite the contrary. There are tremendous opportunities available with the acquisition of a two-year degree right here in Mason City in North Iowa. Now, it is being reported that virtually every major employer in North Iowa's hiring and continuing to hire today. The challenge is the skills gap. That is why our business partners, schools, NIAC, the Chamber of Commerce, North Iowa Corridor, and myself are firmly behind the effort to make North Iowa the state's first work-ready community and are supportive of efforts to get national career readiness certificate testing in front of every high school student. We not only can teach the, the skills through institutions like NIAC, but we have to educate our young people on what those skills are and how they can put them to use here at home. Studies find 60%, 60% of Iowans pursue a four-year degree, but only 25% of Iowa's jobs require one. However, 85% of Iowa's jobs require some post-secondary education. Our opportunity to improve the quality of our workforce comes through the work that's already been started to identify the skill shortage, evaluate the current workforce, and create educational and training opportunities at the earliest levels to address them. We're fortunate to have an institution like NIAC right here in North Iowa that specializes in doing exactly that. With the help of our schools, our local businesses, and awareness of parents, we can close the skills gap, leverage the opportunity, and retain families right here. Folks, if you're like my wife and I, and you're interested in retaining your children and grandchildren, 
in North Iowa, seriously consider presenting the opportunities that a two-year degree from our area community college can provide your high school learner. Let me close by thanking all of our amazing volunteers, commission, commissioners, board members. The value you add to this community is tremendous. On behalf of our council, myself, thank you. If you're interested in volunteering or becoming a commission member, please visit maysoncity.net to apply. I'm going to close this evening with a poem from an unknown author that I have closed with many times. However, I continue to find it as apt now as ever. It's called Builders and Wreckers. I watched them tearing a building down a gang of men in a busy town. With a heap heap ho and a lusty yell, they swung a beam and a wall fell. I asked the foreman, are these men skilled? Like the men you'd hire if you had to build? He replied, and no indeed, just common labor is all I need. I can easily reckon a day or two what builders have taken years to do. I asked myself as I walked away, which of these roles have I tried to play? Am I a builder who walks with care, works with care, measuring life by rule and square? Or am I a wrecker who walks the town, content with the labor tearing down? It's an honor to serve you. Good night. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.